All right, folks, so this is an introduction video to a new product or new to me product. It's called a Nano VNA or a Vector Network Analyzer. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with tools like this. Uh, so again, this is more of an introductory video and uh, we'll continue to use this and continue to grow our skill set and do more in-depth or detailed instructionals um, as we go. You can pick up a, uh, this Nano VNA for about 55 bucks shipped from China on eBay. Uh, I'm not going to list a particular seller because there are some folks that sell copies and clones and some take longer shipping than others and I don't necessarily want to be responsible for a recommendation that uh, might not be that good. Anyhow, uh, these tools are used to do things like me measure um, impedance, uh, phase information, signal loss, SWR on uh, antennas, transmission lines, and other electrical components. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this to look at antennas that we use as part of our ham radio hobby. Uh, maybe antennas that we use on handhelds or maybe antennas that we use in our ham shack. So anyhow, stay tuned and uh, we're going to go through what comes with this and then we're going to do a little testing. Now when this shipped to me, it did have a little bit of packing material in here and uh, I couldn't get it all back in the case. So anyhow, you have the Nano VNA itself um, and it comes with a couple of other options or a couple other items like a USB-C charging cable or programming cable. You can use this to uh, use software to write to your Nano VNA. It also comes with two uh, coaxial cables. One is a male-to-male -male, uh, SMA and one is a male-to-female SMA. And it also comes with some calibration standards and you use these to calibrate your Nano VNA. And so this first one is an open and then it comes with a shorted terminal end here uh, so you can test uh, to see if you would have a shorter test for conditions for shorting. And then it has a 50 ohm uh, load or an impedance load. And as I said, you use these things to calibrate your Nano VNA, which we'll do uh, later on in this video. Let's go ahead and zoom in so we can get a better look at the, uh, the device. The text on this thing is really small. It's got about a two inch uh, screen, give or take. Uh, it powers on by a button on the top. It has an internal uh, lithium ion battery that you charge with the USB cable and uh, it lasts for about two hours is what I'm told. In this video we are going to do some testing on this supposed legit Nagoya 701. It's a dual band antenna. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook it up and see if we can get some readings uh, on this chart. Now the default configuration this device it sweeps from uh, 50 kilohertz all the way up to 900 megahertz and uh, I want to pay attention to this yellow line and that is a return loss measurement and you can see there's dips right around the 2 meter and the 440 uh, megahertz bands um, and those dips what they're showing is is that there is some signal that is not reflected from the antenna back into the VNA. Um, return loss is measured in terms of decibel but it's very similar to SWR, which we measure in an impedance ratio. Um, so you can use the menu on the right hand side. Uh, for example, when I click display, I want to take a look at the different traces. And what I'm doing here is I'm turning everything off except for the return loss because that other stuff to me is just noise. The reason it's just noise is because I really honestly don't know how to interpret most of that data. Um, the Smith chart, I understand a little bit, is a uh, measure of impedance. But again, I'm not an expert on reading Smith charts. I've only had this device for a couple of days. So here I can, uh, I'm showing that uh, we have a negative 7.3 dB uh, return loss at uh, 135 megahertz, if you can see that. Um, so that one thing tells me 135 megahertz is outside the 2 meter ham spectrum, so this antenna is definitely not resonant. According to the calibration on this device, um, on the 2 meter band. And so what I've just done here is I've switched to uh, actual SWR um, reading as opposed to return signal loss. And what I want to do here is I've actually zoomed in a little bit and I've started it at, uh, um, I think it was uh, 10, 10 megahertz and I'm spanning all the way up to 250 megahertz to get a better look at just the supposed two meter, two meter band on this radio. One of the things you'll notice is that as you pick this device up and move it around, uh, your SWR will change. And here we're seeing a 1 to a 1.5, 1.7, 1.4. Uh, SWR, again, it's on 134 megahertz. When you zoom in, and we'll, we'll show how to do this, uh, when you zoom in the, the sweep, make the sweep a little bit of a, of a tighter uh, band, um, the controls on the top of this, there's, a, there's an action wheel. The, um, the measures get more granular, which is, which is pretty handy. 
And as I said, as you move this thing around, like if you orient orientate your uh, antenna vertically, for example, it will it will change your readings. And so, uh, what I want to do here is go in to the um, to the menu again, and I want to show how you can actually recall a calibration that uh, it may have been sent here, and it has uh, five memory slots, so you can calibrate differently. Uh, your device depending upon if you're doing a, a full sweep, maybe a two meter sweep, maybe a, a two meter and 440 sweep, maybe you're doing a uh, you know a, a 14 megahertz sweep on a 20 meter antenna, something like that. So it's uh, it's important for you to be able to maybe save these calibrations uh, for your favorite antennas if you're going to go out in the field or go mobile or, or something along those lines. So here we are, we're going to take a look at the, um, the stimulus setting under display and by clicking the start button I can pick the, the frequencies that I want to sweep. So for example here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 100 megahertz and you can see on the side you have gigahertz, megahertz, and kilohertz. Um, and now I'm going to pick my stop frequency, the default is at 900 as we discussed and I'm going to go ahead and just pick 250. Um, and so from 100 megahertz to 250 megahertz again will give me a pretty good look. Um, at the two meter uh, handband. Here I have the other traces on here, um, and it's less it's less busy uh, when you when you tighten the frequency up a little bit. So there's no need to really turn them off unless you want to. Um, again, the yellow line is where I usually pay more attention, and then the the green line on the uh, Smith chart really shows you what your what your impedance is. So what we're going to do here is actually run through a calibration scenario um, with our reduced scope. Right, 100 to uh, 250 megahertz. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is from the menu, I'm going to go down and I'm going to select Cal for calibration. And then I'm going to pick the calibrate option. And then here are the various settings. So the first thing I need to do is take off uh, the alleged Nagoya antenna that uh, I have attached here. And I need to um, attach the the open calibration standard. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to screw that in. I don't want to over tighten this because I don't want to damage either the standard or the device, but I want to make sure that it is firmly seated. And I go ahead and I click open. It's that easy. And then the menu automatically goes down to short. So now what I need to do is I need to take off this particular standard and then put on the standard to measure the short. And so let's just go ahead and screw that baby on, making sure that uh, we don't over tighten. Once that's done, I go back to the menu and I just simply click that button and it automatically goes down to load. So once again, I need to uh, <laughs> take the, take the uh, calibration standard off and then go ahead and attach, your, t attach this one. Now you could use a different load. You could use different standards if you wanted. Um, just keep in mind that that may impact your uh, calibration. So i got to go ahead and click load and get that to switch. And now it's down to um, isolation. And so for the isolation test, we just leave the two uh, SMA connectors open. And the last one is a through test. And so what we want to do here is use the coax that we've got with the two male connectors. And then uh, we just screw one of those on the channel 1 and channel 2. And then that will allow us to send a, a signal out on channel 1 and see what's uh, reflected back on channel 0. Or I might have that one backwards. Uh, mine didn't come with an instruction manual. And some of the instruction manuals that I've found online... Uh, generally are written in Chinese, and uh, I'm not up to speed on uh, on my Mandarin. So yeah, once I do that, I hit done, and I can save this in one of the slots. I'm going to go ahead and save it in slot one. Now, at a later date, if I want to bring this back up, I can just use the recall method that we saw earlier in the video. Taking a look at the device itself, you can see it's constructed with standoffs. There's a PCB board in the middle. Um, it looks like it has a little bit of a Nexion touchscreen or a TTF touchscreen. There's some symbols on the back of the device that show you what the different ports are for. And again, there's a jog wheel at the top of the device that I use um, to navigate uh, through the maybe the, a trace line that I'm, that I'm interested in. Anyhow, that's really it. Um, I plan on doing some more videos, maybe getting a little more in-depth as to how to use this thing. Uh, I would like to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate it.